I mean, literally, there's dozens of shrimp just in on this one side, this one of four sides. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen against the glass in this frame alone. And then I pan over, and they continue. I mean, they're 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 dead in their tracks up above. And you turn the corner from this pile of dead shrimp, and there's another pile of dead shrimp. These shrimp going for seven to twelve dollars, depending on the color variation. Some of the only ones in the world. Seven years of work, and one heater brand is what caused all of this carnage. And I think people need to know about it, and word needs to get around that this is unacceptable. I mean, they're all dead. Literally hundreds of shrimp. They're all dead. And, and some of them are literally on the same plant in which they were sitting when they must have died, or rather been electrocuted. Uh, in fact, everything other than snails, there are a few snails alive, all the fish, all my rare fish, and all my shrimp, my Malawa shrimp that were in here, including these pregnant females, these two here, all of them uh, are, are dead. They're gone, and they're in piles. There are, there's just death all across this tank. And uh, I came home from being away for just a few days and immediately the first thing that came to mind was what did I do wrong? What what did I do wrong leaving? Did I overfeed them? Did I do something that would lead to this? And, and you know, I check all the other tanks. They're all completely healthy and happy, doing fine. And uh, then the next line of defense is to grab the test strips and test strips show I mean now it's been an hour over an hour test strips just to show you compared to what a normal one looks like after an hour or two they all kind of turn bright even though they're not really that way this one just as old it didn't even turn slightly pink on uh, the nitrite nitrate so I figured okay well then maybe there was a giant ammonia spike this has been sitting since a live stream earlier when I discovered all this and let's get you know even lighting on this it's barely registering as 0.25 so here is the card and you know you could see that it's 0.25 maybe 0.5 at, at, at the very most and it's gotten greener since I first tested it so it isn't ammonia it wasn't that and next thing I did on the live stream, if you were watching, was I almost put my hand in the tank. Almost put my hand in the tank. And what I did many times before, just like I do every day, is I work in the tank. I work with these fish. I, you know, I know each of them. I know their needs. And if you were recently helping with my medical bills, I was selling off a whole bunch of these shrimp because I was proud of the fact that I bred a colorful line of Malawa shrimp. There's blue ones and there's red ones. And look, they're all dead. Every single one in this tank is dead. You know, these are usually vibrant and active shrimp moving all over the place if you look around you can see them luckily I, I still have other populations in my other tanks but this was my mother colony this was also where um, there there are just a few fry left um, and the ammonia now is rising so I literally need to grab these babies out of here ASAP also my coral pencil fish six of them plus my Equus pencil fish all of them dead so anything that probably wasn't right on this side of the aquarium shocked and dead unfortunately and just look at this it's just a graveyard it's it's piles of them and 
I don't know if they're pink because they're cooked, but I haven't seen that either in this species of shrimp. I don't usually see that. And it seems as though where they usually hide in the corners, maybe they got some discomfort and then all of a sudden everything went overboard and, and they died. Um, but they're all the way around the back too uh, of the tank. You can see them all around the back bottom. And, you know, I'm surprised for sitting there for, uh, you know, hours to days, up, it could have been up to two days that they were there. And the tank only had that much ammonia and no nitrates or nitrates. So, so the filter's still working. Yet, my poor fish. Um, some really unusual and... Uh, rare fish were in here and you know recently my macrostoma bettas were in here which are incredibly rare and you know almost two hundred dollars each well i walk into the room and i smell this bleach smell an overpowering like clorox smell i thought that's really weird and i thought maybe something had spilled or uh, a bottle of rubbing alcohol or just you know some some chemically smell was was emanating from the room somewhere and i thought what could it be and soon enough i found on the live stream this and look at this catastrophic failure it cracked right all the way up the thing all the way up the heater and down the bottom it, it looks like a piece of pie or cake was cut out of it this one's cracked all the way across and it just reeks of this chemically acrid smell here you can see I don't know what it is but it cooked out and it looks almost like a coppery oxidized copper color um, I'd consider this hazardous you know honestly but luckily, I unplugged it before I put my hand anywhere near it. And I want to show you something else. This is the same exact brand, Aquion. And Aquion here, they have this heater, this 100-watt heater. And uh, made in Italy. I'm sure the parts are all from China. You can see this is what the Pro Series looks like. This is a $45 to $52 heater in the United States for the 100 watt. And it's supposed to be accurate to within one degree of temperature. Now they also have made different styles over the years. These two happen to be the most recent. And they, they made them over the last two or three years. But they've both failed catastrophically and in the same way not in quite the same place but almost the same place you can see by where the writing is now the interesting thing is there's actually a seam and it's not 180 degrees it's the seam is is uh it, it's not relevant to where the the crack happened it's off from that it's maybe 120 degrees from the other seam and so it didn't split up the seam or anything. And again, on this one, you see the crack emanates from the bottom. And failure, massive failure. This one electrocuted my mormorids and killed all the fish in the tank. Killed uh, four garamis. And I chalked it up to, you know, bad luck. Sometimes heaters fail. And I knew it wasn't from heat that killed him because I actually had a probe that a friend brought over and it showed that there was stray voltage from this one kicking off in this big 40 gallon breeder. Well, when I saw this same crack, same exact thing in this tank, I knew right away that it was the same exact thing. And they need to recall these. This could have been a fire this could have electrocuted me. If this killed all the fish, it's putting off some nasty chemicals here. Whatever's leaking out of it, it smells very bad. I'm going to get rid of it right now. But these Aquion Pros that are considered like solid state or silica or uh, sand, sometimes you'll see them say on the, the sign or in the messaging online and stuff, they have like um, a ceramic or, 
or basically sand uh, some sort of like powder coating inside that's supposed to distribute the heat. Well, it doesn't. It, it seems to just overheat. And there's no failsafe, clearly, in these. So if they get too hot, they expand, explode, and then there's stray voltage in your tank. And the tank was still at 81 degrees. All the other tanks in the room were at 74. So that means it was still heating and continuing to put live current through my tanks all the way up till when I found them on the live stream. I just want everyone to be aware that this is happening with these Aquions. It's happened to two of mine. What are the odds? I've heard it happen to others. Now, this is a known problem in many heaters, a lot of brands. But this is this is serious, and I, I'm going to have to reach out to them again for comment, and I'll let you know if they even comment at all this time. First time, they basically just said, these things happened, you want another heater. Well, I can say I will not be using these heaters ever again, and I think I'm going to be switching to the Heiger style uh, heaters that have an actual analog failsafe in them. Uh, if it gets too hot, a piece of metal expands and no longer touches, so it's no longer even possible for it to keep heating, and uh, I think that's the way to go. I don't know what's going wrong in these. If you guys have experience with these, let me know. I, I'd really like to hear other stories, other brands that are problematic. This has been a problem in the hobby for a long time, but this is way above and beyond the odds for two to fail in a year. Uh, in the same exact way, so catastrophically, and killing those shrimp that I was selling, it's over a thousand dollars, even wholesale, of shrimp that, that's just dead. And not to mention seven years of me keeping this line, and culling, and color selecting, and the rare fish that were in there. It's really heartbreaking when these things happen, and it's just enraging when you didn't do anything other than put a heater in there that was the wrong brand. So if you have one of those, please be careful. Uh, and whenever you're cleaning your, your, your tank or anything, always unplug the heater. Don't, don't take chances with electronics. That's all I really have to say right now. I, I don't know what to do. Um, the Malawa shrimp selling that I've been doing is on hold for now because I have them in other tanks but none are like that one, the mother tank that has been up for years and years. And the substrate in this tank has been cycled for six years. This was my filterless tank up until recently uh, when I added a filter and the heater because I was worried and this is what happens. I'll be heating the room and with a few exceptions using Heiger um, heaters or, or maybe Eheims from now on, I think. Um, but that being said, I hear every heater has at least failed, but this is unacceptable. Overheating and either cooking the fish and then having the stray voltage and electrocution, it's downright dangerous for fires, it's downright dangerous for humans, and obviously for all those hundreds of dead creatures in there. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, just to help spread this, if, if, you, if you could um, either share hit the thumbs up, drop a comment, uh, it all really helps. And uh, I just think people need to know that this is going on with this brand that's sold at Petco all the time. And I, I think it's sold in a lot of other stores too, but I, I always see it at Petco. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll talk to you on a lighter note next time, hopefully. Bye.